and you're starting a small business. Kamala Harris will give you a $50,000 tax credit to help you get it off the ground. She believes in entrepreneurship. That's what Kamala is. That's what she stands for, not concepts of a plan. Actual plans. Now, if you challenge Trump or, or J.D. Vance on these quote-unquote concepts, they'll fall back on one final answer. This is their go-to. After everything else makes no sense, they'll go, and it doesn't matter what the issue is, housing, health care, education, paying the bills, they'll blame immigrants. He wants you to believe if you let him round up whoever he wants and ship him out, all your problems will be solved. Now, wait, hold on a second, because this is a serious piece of business. Arizona is a border state. You know there are real issues at the border. We can't pretend there are not. We are a nation of laws, and we are a nation of immigrants. We were built on immigrants looking for a better life. We also have to make sure that the system works the way it was supposed to. Right? So, so we have a, a real problem to solve. But remember, Donald Trump was president for four years. He likes to talk about Kamala being vice president for years. We remember you being president, buddy, for four years. And if rounding up and deporting millions of desperate people, many of them women and children, is the answer to everything, looks like we might need an EMT right in front here. Everybody bend your knees real quick. Because sometimes when you stand too long, you get a little faint. Nope, should be all right. Just got to make sure. And, and, and drink your, drink something if you got it. All right. Good job, EMTs. So, so the question is, why did not why didn't he actually solve the problem when he was in power? Why was the number of undocumented immigrants basically the same when he left office as when he took office? I'll tell you why. Because he didn't have a real plan and he still doesn't. What he had is talking points. What he had is a concept of a plan. And by the way, it was a mean and ugly concept. You know what would actually help bring order to the border and actually help fix our immigration system? The bipartisan deal that Kamala Harris supported, even though it was written by one of the most conservative Republicans in Congress, and Donald Trump deliberately lobbied against it and told Republicans don't vote for it because he figured that if you passed it, he would not be able to engage in the same kind of fear-mongering that he's been doing. He, he would care more about winning an election than he did to actually solve the problem. Boom! <laughs> We do not need a president who's willing to make problems worse to make his politics better. We need a president who actually cares about solving problems, making your life better. That's what Kamala Harris will do. And that's what he's got to vote. Yeah. To help her do it. She needs a Senate full of public servants like Ruben Gallego. You you heard Ruben speak a little bit about his life, son of an immigrant. 
single mom growing up. He and his sisters didn't have much. He worked construction, worked as a meat packer, anything to help his family. Later, he served in the Marines. In Congress, he's proven that he will stand up to corporate price cash and work to lower costs for families. Ruben's the kind of person we need in Washington. This is the kind of person that's going to help Kamala get stuff done. But to share our values and we'll do whatever they can to move the country forward. Teaming up with Mark Kelly, and that's a that's a powerful one to punch right there. One of those values that Ruben shares and it's talked a lot about in the campaign is freedom. I want to talk a little bit about that. I, I do not think we've ever had an election with candidates who understand freedom so different. For Donald Trump and his cronies, freedom means that the powerful can do whatever they please. That's his definition of, free, of freedom. I want to hire workers or try and organize a union. I should be free to do so. You know, they, they're, they're, they, they want the freedom to throw out votes if, if they lose an election. They, they, want to, they want to control what women can and can't do to their bodies. In, 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 in other words, for Trump, freedom is getting away with stuff. And, it, and it's like he said in the middle of the pandemic, when he said, I do not take any responsibility at all. I'm not sure any American president has ever uttered those words other than Donald Trump. I do not take any... People were dying. Hospitals overrun. I do not take any responsibility at all. That's his idea of freedom. I do what I want, and I'm not responsible for anything. We have a broader idea of freedom. We believe in the freedom to provide for our families if we're willing to work. The freedom to breathe clean air and drink clean water. The freedom to send our kids to school without worrying if they'll come home. Say, <laughs> we believe that true freedom gives each of us the right to make decisions about our own lives. How we worship, who we marry, what our family looks like. And we also believe that freedom requires us to recognize that other people have the freedom to make different choices. And it doesn't make them bad people. It doesn't make them evil people. It doesn't make them enemies of the state. Now, I, I, I listen to some of the language that's being thrown around. Look, even on the most contentious issues, I, I've always said there are good people of conscience on both sides of the abortion divide. And I respect Anybody whose faith tells them that it's not something that they would do, that they support. But if we believe in freedom, then we should at least agree that such a deeply personal decision should be made by the woman whose body is involved, not by politicians. And, and, and it's, it's, it's been fascinating to watch Donald Trump and just try to tie himself in a pretzel on this issue because he sees that what his party has been doing is unpopular. And so when he ran for president the first time, he said he would support punishing women who got an abortion, punishing women. Then a couple of weeks ago, he tells women he'll be their, quote, protector. Yeah. I, I will tell you how he protected you, quote, unquote. He handpicked three of the Supreme Court justices who overturned Roe versus Wade. He bragged about it. And now there are Trump abortion bans in 20 states, many of them with no exceptions for rape and incest. And he's out there saying 
Well, you know, everyone wanted it this way. Really? Now the Trump may be confused, but let's be clear about what's at stake here. If you send Ruben Gallo to the Senate, he'll vote to restore the reproductive freedom the women can't remember. <laughs>